right, hello, and welcome to this, our third day of the Approaching Net Zero Digital Conference. My name is Sarah Fry, and I look after the membership and marketing here at the Institute of Quarrying. We're pleased to be bringing you this series of conference sessions uh, in conjunction with the Institute of National Technology. Covering different themes each day of the week of the conference, and today's theme is all about how to use technology and how that can help drive more efficient and sustainable processes. I'm going to hand over to Alan Ferguson from Transport Scotland to kick off our session today. His presentation is going to be looking at how to use automatically collected data in road surfacing operations and how that facilitates efficient and effective working. Alan is a chartered engineer and past president of the IAT. He spent over 25 years working in the design, production and laying of asphalt for quarrying companies and representing them on a number of national pavement committees. Um, his last industry position was Director of Quality and Environmental Services for Breed and Aggregate Scotland and six years ago joined uh, Waterman Aspen as a senior consultant and is currently on full-time placement with Transport Scotland as a materials advisor. So over to you, Alan. Thanks very much. And I'd just like to say thank you to the Institute of Quarrying and the IAT for inviting me along today to speak. We've brought uh, automated construction monitoring into our specifications and standards as a requirement because we, Transport Scotland, recognises the fact that you get benefits in your efficiency and benefits in the end product that you get when you implement these types of systems. We are convinced that that is a very real benefit. Uh, and I'm now going to give you this presentation, where, which will kind of explain why we've come to these conclusions. And also, perhaps people will engage and begin to get their head around the, the potential, because we're not fully there yet, but the potential that we, we could get to in terms of fully utilising automated construction monitoring systems uh, to drive efficiency in road surfacing operations. So, what data is collected? Well, firstly, with the paver, we have a GPS location monitoring to an accuracy of about within one meter. We have surface and surface temperature and material temperature as it travels through the asphalt paver. We have truck registration and material details. And we also have a weather station sitting on top of the paver collecting simple weather data, which means that you don't have to worry about scribbled notes on bits of paper. It's all collected there electronically, air temperature, wind speed, etc. With the rollers, we have an in-cab display showing the first temperature pass of the surface as the roller drives over it and pass counts. And the GPS location system for the rollers is more accurate. It's within 30 centimetres, and that's because it needs to be accurate enough to record where the roller is sitting across the 3.6 wide pavement mat. So we need to know if it's on the left side, the right side, or in the middle. So 30 centimetres is actually required for your GPS accuracy. And that does require extra specialised kit and an annual licence to be purchased, but we think that money is worth it. Okay, here's a wee uh, schematic. Uh, kindly supplied by Tarmac and HDS, which shows the whole operation uh, and how the automated data is collected. I'm just gonna let you consider it as it, as it runs through, because I think it, it shows the process quite, quite nicely. And quick, quickly to talk through this, Asphalt plant produces the material. It's put in the back of your uh, delivery truck. When it leaves the site, that information is set to the, sent to the cloud. And um, you either have GPS tracking of the vehicle on the way to site, or you might use Google Maps to predict an estimated time of arrival. As soon as that's de those details are on the cloud, they are available to the asphalt paver operator and anyone else that has the login details to go and see exactly where that, that truck is. Once it arrives on site, the more sophisticated systems have a geofence which uh, locate the truck within the vicinity of the paver and see it is now awaiting discharge into the uh, paver. When it's discharged into the paver, the exact location through GPS is monitored 
uh, as it flows through the paver, you get the temperature at the back of the paver, the surface temperature, and then the rollers monitor it. But the point about all this information is it's collected real time, sent to the cloud. And once it's sent to the cloud, it can be accessed by anyone that has the links to the information, whether that's on a mobile phone or on a laptop. And so, for example, a technician sitting in a, in a quarry lab can open up the data and see exactly where that uh, surfacing operation's got to on that day, when he needs to get out on site or what samples need to be taken, or if there's an issue with temperatures. Likewise, the uh, asphalt plant operator could also have access to that. The supervisor, if he's covering two or three jobs, could have access to that. And senior management, maybe this is a good thing or maybe this is a bad thing, but senior management can go in and see how their, their big jobs are, are getting on and if they're meeting the efficiency targets for the site. It's very powerful. So in terms of the surfacing squad, it's working away. It wants to know exactly when each load's going to arrive. In the past, you would have had to phone the, the Weybridge and speak to the clerk and say, how many loads are sent? When did you send them? None of that has to happen anymore. You can look at a display on the side of your paper and it tells you exactly where you are, what trucks are on site waiting to be unloaded, what trucks are on their way and what time they will arrive. And that allows you to be more efficient in your laying operation, to know when you can continue laying, maybe slow up the rate of progress, but continue laying when you actually this foreman will know when he actually has to form a cool joint because the next load isn't going to come for, say, arrive on site for another half hour. He has to form a cool joint and he knows that there's no shilly shally and he just gets on with it. Just to look at the hardware that's actually fitted to the uh, paver, these are thermometers which are mounted above the augers behind the paver screed. So the asphalt material goes through the paver and it's pushed out to the full length of the paver screed by the augers and it's been turned over. So these measure the radiation and therefore the temperature coming off the surface of the asphalt. But because the material has been turned over, it's actually quite an accurate uh, temperature measurement. The data is sent through a black box up to the cloud and becomes available for monitoring and analysis real time, but also retrospectively. So what we've got here is some retrospective reports that can be generated. Once you can measure something and analyze it, you can then set key performance indicators and look at how you can consider how big a problem is and how much effort's worth putting in to improve efficiency. And this is some really interesting data from a real site. These letters along the bottom represent actual loads delivered. Zero is when they were discharged from the quarry. And the, the top here, the time it spent in transport to site and sitting on site prior to discharge. So this mix here, it was 110 minutes from discharge at the plant to discharge into the paver hopper. So mix N, for example, is a star performer. It managed to get stuff from site, from the quarry to the site and into the paver hopper in just over 40 minutes. Whereas as truck R was sitting on site possibly, or maybe it was stuck in traffic, we don't know, but we know that it's been a lot longer in transit, almost two hours before it was discharged into the, the back of the paver. And this is very powerful information. And if you start charging that up until, in terms of waiting time, you understand the economics of this kind of information, which probably will focus minds into how to improve efficiency. You've also got real time and retrospective reporting of temperatures, the material going through the uh, asphalt plant, the top data here and the material once the roller is, is coming onto it. And these are maximum temperatures that have been recorded. You can see some of them are slightly above the, the maximum temperature in the spec. I would not be consider, uh, concerned about that. The average temperature for these loads is probably sitting comfortably between the, the 150 and the 190 uh, target. We also have a thermal imaging camera on the back of the asphalt paver. This is a modern one. It's got a widescreen uh, photograph that it takes, which gives a widescreen thermal image of the road mat as you drive along. The, the old fashioned ones actually were a bit more like the magic eye system. And what they did was they had the camera looked and, and moved across the mat like this, and you got spots, and then they all got amalgamated together to get your, your profile. And I've got an interesting uh, slide of, of the 
granulated data that you got there, whereas the more modern ones now just take a wide angle to scan and come up with the, the temperature. This is an image of the output that you get. So the paper has run from left to right, and this is the thermal image of the mat behind the paper as you run along. And down below it, we've got the collected data of the paper stops. So each one of these paper stops is where uh, material, one, one delivery truck's emptied and another delivery truck's reversed in and dropped material into the back of the paper. And that's how long it's been sitting waiting. So this one here at the end was, was a, a 10 minute changeover uh, for the paver truck. Now, if a material transfer vehicle had been used on this site to take material out the back of a delivery truck and then put it straight into the asphalt paver, this uh, temperature would be much more consistent. What you've got here is bright yellow shows the hotter material and then the dark bits show the cooler material. And these sections here, which are darker, they represent the load ends. As one truck's finished, the end of that load is slightly chilled in the back of the wagon, and you see the dark, the dark colours coming through. That material is more difficult to compact, and ultimately, because of that, might be more voided at, at the end of the day once the construction's finished, and that will shorten that section's life on the road. Here's another uh, thermal image out the back of a, a paver. I've shown these two before because I think they're really worth scrutiny. So in this instance, the pavers run from bottom to top and we've highlighted where the uh, paver has stopped. Some of these stops have been to change over from one delivery truck to the next. You can see the cold load end sections again in this. And another really interesting one here is this, the paver has stopped for an unknown reason at this point for seven minutes and 21 seconds. And in that time, the material sitting under the paver screed has cooled. You can see it's a bit darker by possibly 15 uh, degrees C, which makes it slightly more difficult to compact, still entirely compactable, I'm sure. But once you have this kind of information, you can see, you know, why, why has this happened? This is not what we want for optimum laying for efficiency and for a consistent product to allow consistent compaction to give us consistent voids at a good long life. Okay, and the wonderful thing about sending it out to the cloud uh, is once it's up there, it can be downloaded. Anyone with the correct secure link can pick up that information and download it to their smart device. And here we have a, a mobile phone showing the thermal profile. Apologies for this photograph. I don't know why my camera chose to uh, flash. It was daylight. But nonetheless, you can see the thermal image uh, and you can, you'll can you need to trust me that it was quite a good thermal image before, before my camera distorted the colours with the flash. So this is real time and anyone with that link can have that information. So it could be a technician, it could be the roller driver, or it could be, as I say, an asphalt plant operator wanting to know how, his, how consistent his material is coming through the paper at, at the right temperature. And the roller driver can see cold spots. In terms of how real up to date this information is, it, the time is taken for this stuff to be uploaded from the asphalt plant to the cloud and come back down into the smart device is three or four minutes. So there is a small time lag uh, in terms of this information becoming available to anyone that has the link. Nonetheless, it is, it is very powerful information and you can use that to change your roller patterns as necessary. Uh, I talked a wee bit about the old fashioned, more granular individual spot temperature monitoring system for for um, for the old thermal cameras before the wide angle lenses came in. And this is one such image. So I've zoomed right into this uh, particular uh, laying uh, surface temperature profile. And you can see in this one, the actual, the, the colors are reversed. So it's actually the darker colors warmer and the lighter colors cooler. But it's a similar kind of shape of the cold bits coming through. This has all been uploaded and made available through a Power BI report. And what you can do is you can go to the map, you can zoom into bits and this image zooms in and you can spot cold areas or you can look at the, the image and zoom into bits and spot them on the ground. You can then walk along the actual road with this detail in hand and spot sections. And 
The, the other information, the GPS location of every single road is likewise displayed so that you can actually walk along a road, you can see cold spots and you can see exactly which, these are all delivery wagons, where each delivery wagon and we've got the, the GPS location and we've got the vehicle reg for all these and you can actually see, so if one wagon was particularly poor, poorly insulated, you would see its cold spot where, where it's been come uh, repeated back, uh, returned back to site for, for two or three loads. And this does happen. And surfacing squads know individual wagons are, are worse, more poorly insulated than others. And it provides the information that can readily become available to transport departments so they can properly take action. Insulation is, is so important to protect the quality of material. A lot of time and effort is, is put into manufacturing asphalt in spec and at the correct temperature. And the last thing anyone wants is it being spoiled by the delivery vehicle. So Tarmac now are taking uh, photographs. This is a couple of images that Tarmac gave, gave me um, of the thermal image of the back of a delivery vehicle. And this is two different delivery vehicles. And you can he see on this one, there's clear heat escaping through a poorly insulated back end of, of the delivery vehicle. And that will translate to cold spots when you're, when you're uh, laying your material. So suddenly the information using these modern uh, devices is there to allow you to take action to improve the operation and the efficiency. And if you're wondering why I keep going on and on about cold spots, this is why. This is an image that I've presented at, at many different venues because I just think it is so important. This bit of material here, this is a trunk road in Scotland. It was cold when it, at, it was at the back end of a delivery vehicle whether it happened, whether it chilled on the way to the site or whether it chilled waiting on site or sitting waiting to unload in, into the paver, we don't know. Certainly there was no material transfer vehicle used. And in terms of the age of this road, I think it was somewhere between eight and 10 years old. So it's it's not, it's out with the material period guarantee. But this was cold, so it could not be properly compacted. So it was quite voided. So moisture has got in and broken it down. And now we've got a pothole repair requirement. You move 50 metres along the road to the next load end, and it's the same. And the next load end is the same. Once these are all patched, the maintenance en road engineer comes along here and sees a high frequency of road patching happening along this bit of road and says the whole road is shot. We need to fix that whole section. And it's a frustration because the central section of this material was actually fine, possibly giving a good running surface for the next, you know, who knows, next five years. But the life of the pavement has been compromised by these cold load spots. So the whole efficiency process, once it's implemented, the knowledge is understood, will lead to minimisation of this kind of occurrence, which is, which is good for everybody. Uh, so just in conclusion with the paver, what we have in terms of a laying record is, is a complete record of everything that was put on site and exactly where every load was placed. And hopefully in the next five to 10 years, pavement management systems will be in a position to automatically upload this data straight into their construction record without any double handling of the information. Uh, and it becomes a very powerful tool that allows very accurate analysis of payment performance. And once you can accurately analyze things, you can uh, Im improve them and use key performance indicators to monitor that improvement. Moving on to the roller and the systems we have in place with rollers now. This is the uh, visual display that now has to be in roller cabs. And you can see along the top here, we've got uh, colors indicating the number of roller passes over the road surface. This is it parked up, ready to go, and the surface temperature. Once it starts rolling on a hot mat, the system's operated, and you can see as the roller does its roller passes, the colors show how many passes, which part, which area of that road surface has received. And if there's two rollers on site, those two rollers are required to communicate with each other. So not only does the roller driver see what he's done, he also sees what he's co his colleague has done as well, which is very important. It's difficult enough for a roller driver 
following a rolling pattern consistently on a mat as he goes himself without him having to keep an eye on the second roller driver and understand the number of passes he's done. But this system makes it much, much more straightforward. So you can do your passes, you can achieve a maximum green colour over as much of the area as possible. And then you could say, I have now given this road enough passes. It's up to the roller driver. Nowadays, what happens is that they tend to keep a good roller driver will tend to keep moving back and forth slowly until such times as the mat has chilled sufficiently that is chilled so that he can roll out the roller marks. When a mat's hot, the roller marks will remain in, in that surface. But now we have the ability with surface temperature monitoring to do sufficient passes to compact it to the required compaction and then pull off and wait till the temperature is low enough to come back on and uh, do your finishing passes to take away any roller marks. Uh, and that leads to greater efficiency, less, less fuel usage, less CO2 into the, into the atmosphere. And just to kind of unpack a wee bit the, the whole roller information system, this is, this is my, my last slide and it's just really wrapping it up. But just to understand the power of this information, this is a road that's been laid and the different colors on the road show you how many passes the road has had. And you can tell at a glance, there's a variety of colors there, moving from blue to green, which is what you want to see, but odd bits of yellow and, and orange. Now, if we zoom into that information, we can actually, the system in place looks at the area of the road and works out the area that has received how many passes of the roller. And this is a pie chart showing that information. So some 29 plus 17, 30, 40 odd percent, 50 percent of the material has had eight or more passes, uh, this bit and this bit. Uh, on the other hand, some 35 percent has had five or less roller passes. So this amount of road surface has had five or less passes. Now, I should say this particular piece of work was done on one roller when two rollers were actually on site. So it was before the two rollers were communicating and number of passes of both rollers were presented. So it's worse than what actually occurred on site. But it does highlight, you know, that, that roller driver perhaps thinks that he's fully covered the, the entire width of the full length of the road. Without these visual uh, displays aiding the roller compaction, he can't know exactly how much has been passed, but this information allows him to be much more efficient and to cover much more of the, the road, the hot road material with the same number of passes to give a good, long lasting, low voided material. Okay, so that comes to the end of my talk. In conclusion, automated data collection will lead to optimised delivery scheduling. And I know that's largely perhaps already in place. Most of the asphalt suppliers already have these systems for their own use, but this becomes available for, uh, this makes it available for the site paver operator and allows the paver operator to optimise his operation procedure for best laying for quality and efficiency. Trucks with poor insulation can be quickly identified and actions taken to improve that situation. And rolling patterns can be optimised for efficiency. And finally, the opportunity for real-time correction when temperature compaction issues uh, occur. So if a cold lump comes through a roller and uh, it goes through the asphalt paver uh, and it's past um, compaction, there is an opportunity there for a, a foreman to spot that cold lump uh, and the kind of nuclear option is to pull in a tractor to come and dig out that cold lump and, and put back some hot stuff and fix it rather than waiting five years for the pothole to develop and then put in a road closure and fix it. So all in all, much, much more efficient and beneficial for, frankly, everybody. Uh, and that concludes my talk. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Alan. That was a really interesting and informative presentation. Um, how how widely do you think those technology solutions are currently being adopted by the various industries? You know, is it, 
is there some way to go? Is there something that we should be doing to support operators in kind of helping them make the transition across to utilising this technology to support their own sustainability goals? Yeah, in um, terms of uh, application of the technology I was talking about today, some of the bigger asphalt suppliers have chosen to start using that off, off their own bikes because they appreciate the efficiency benefits and improved performance. Other operators, maybe less enlightened, uh, wait to be nudged by uh, overseeing organisations or, or, uh, or, or I don't know, or the, just, the, just, the, just the fact that, you know, all your peers have it and, and the realisation that they're gaining something and you're not. So I, I would guess most of the bigger operators implement these types of systems now and small, smaller to medium size are, are, are maybe just thinking about it. There, there is a cost. But um, you do get the money back through efficiency. So hopefully in 10 years time, everyone will have its standard kit fitted when they buy the uh, equipment. We had a question in on autonomous electric vehicles, uh, yeah. the likelihood of autonomous electric vehicles being utilised across the sector. Rollers, I think most of the big roller suppliers are now have, it's just a prototype level, I think. They have prototype rollers that are fully autonomous and will run by themselves. Uh, but I've yet to hear of anyone actually thinking about buying one of these pieces of equipment at this point in time. But I'm sure they'll come.